metabolic flexibility is the ability of the body to shift very readily between the two primary fuel sources. Now, the cells of the body actually have several fuel sources, but the primary fuel sources are fats and glucose. So at any moment, the body is either primarily fat burning or it's a mix of fat burning and if you will, sugar burning or blood sugar or blood glucose to be more precise. I'll just say sugar burning it just has a good ring to it. So at any moment, that is the, the, the primary source of fuel for the body and it shifts. There are times when the body is primarily fat burning and there are other times when the body is primarily sugar burning. For example, if you were to eat a mixed macronutrient meal, it has carbs and fats and proteins because of the carbs, most especially, you should expect that if you were measuring fuel use in the body, the body would shift primarily to sugar burning. Of course, that would be even more the case if you just ate pure carb, the body would heavily shift to sugar burning. Now give the body six hours or so get into a fasted state, and you should shift over quite substantially to fat burning. So the body will shift that would be a healthy response when you're eating food after that period of time that you've eaten in that post prandial state or the post eating state, you would shift to sugar burning, give your body a couple hours or wake up the next day, and you'll be in fat burning mode. Um, that is metabolic flexibility. What this manuscript noted, um, the, that first identified metabolic inflexibility is that there were some people who even when they were in what should be a fasted state, they weren't transitioning out of sugar burning. They were staying in that sugar burning state, not entering into the fat burning state. Even though the metabolic situation had changed, they hadn't been eating. They're fasted. It has been it had been the same number of hours, whereas other study subjects had already gone to fat burning, they were still stuck primarily in sugar burning. In other words, their metabolism was inflexible. It had, it had become rigid. The gears of the metabolic engine had become gummed up and stuck, if you will. Now, why? Of course, that's the next question. Now that you understand what metabolic inflexibility is, it is in fact, the why of it is answered once again, by invoking insulin resistance, or in this case, to be very precise, just elevated insulin. Insulin is in fact, the director of which fuel is going to be used. If insulin is elevated, the body is obligatorily in sugar burning mode. If insulin is reduced, if insulin is low, then the body goes to fat burning mode. That is the single most important variable or the dictator in which fuel is going to be used. It's all about insulin. And again, to say that again, low insulin, leads to fat burning, elevated insulin leads to sugar burning. Now let's come back to those people who th that were published in this report that were metabolically inflexible. Can you see why they might be stuck in sugar burning mode? Even when it had been hours since they'd eaten and others had long since moved into the state of fat burning, why were those people stuck in sugar burning? If elevated insulin is determining fuel use, elevated insulin, in fact, in this case was the cause. These are people who are insulin resistant. And as you'll recall, one of the features of insulin resistance is elevated, indeed chronically elevated blood insulin. Insulin is just staying too high all the time. And then you knowing now and remembering that metabolic inflexibility is really a manifestation once again, just like the metabolic syndrome is of insulin resistance.